All right, brothers and sisters, friends and family, much love to everybody out there. Much love to everybody who's part of the kingdom work, who's part of the will of our creator, which is a, it's a way that is based upon the lives of people being in Torah, is based upon the fruits of those being in Torah, the fruits being things that our kingdom is, is willing to do. And one of these fruits is the prison ministry that Yah Scriptures is and is about. And I have about 30 guys personally that I talk to on death row alone, which keeps me busy throughout all the week. And it is a long, long journey because every single email I spend a very much, I, I spend as much time as I need to in it. I go line by line. I reply to them line by line with their stories and with their stuff. And we correspond and we interact. And there's just a, a tremendous amount of fruit that is being able to be born inside of this these prison systems and if anybody out there wants to be a part of Yah scriptures wants to be a part of Yah prison ministries send me an email please to jboss008 at gmail.com and i can show you guys we have a little package that's all set up that we set you guys up with and include the names of brothers and sisters out there and 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 get you fully established into this so we're looking for anybody that wants to do this and Guys, I'd like to keep this brother in prayer. His name is Felix Roca. And Felix is 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 uh, literally, I think, a, a, almost an illegal immigrant. And he has been in, um, he's been in a very, very long time. And he doesn't speak a lot of English. And so I go back and forth. I put everything into um, Google Translator, pop it over to him. And uh, he's he's been a very interesting guy to talk to. And I, I got this letter from him. And I wanted to, to share it with you guys because it, it's, a, it's a view into what many would describe as a life of hell, an untorah-like life of hell that people are being held like animals almost indefinitely in some cases. And you can see how it affects the people. You can see how it mentally affects people. I've run into guys in the prison system who I try to communicate with. And he writes back in code. And then I find out from another brother who's been in there for decades that the guard, this guy used to be normal and the guards used to abuse him and, and do weird gassing of the chambers and things like this, where they would like pepper spray the guy and just really torment the guys on death row. And finally, this guy snapped and his mind is no longer well. And he's like, this brother said he's, he belongs in a psych ward at this point. He's, he's just mentally not there. So Felix, I wanted to share this letter with you guys. And thank everybody who has purchased a Yah Scriptures because with Yah Scriptures, we are able to get a full Scriptures into these brothers and sisters in chains. And we're trying to make this something more than just a limited edition with Yah Scriptures. We want to do this indefinitely. And so it is by you guys able to get these Scriptures into brothers and sisters' hands that we're able to get these Scriptures into these brothers in chains' hands. So I want to share with you Felix Roca and ask again that you guys would pray for this brother. And um, we'll discuss this as we read it. He goes, Shalom, my friend. Hello. How are you doing? Hope you and your family doing well. I'm doing well. And again, this was this was partial. Um, he tried a little bit in English and then uh, he wrote in Spanish. And this is, the, this is what the translator came up with. <laughs> Thank you for a letter. The letter. I saw you've been sent, it says, on September 7th, 2024. But I just get on the tablet moments ago. We is good to hear from you and then for tell me a little bit about how your life is there. And then what he says here, I don't like what you say on sometimes that the bus don't stop to pick you and your sons. What I explained to Felix is, is you know, racism in the States is, is absolutely a, a crazy thing. It's always a, a, a very strange concept for me to understand. But down here um, in the land where we're at in what some would call a third world country, but it seems a little first world to me these days. But we sometimes can't get buses because they see that we're white and so they will shut the doors we, they won't pick us up um there's been many occasions where the buses refuse us um simply because we're foreigners and so that's what he's talking about right there continuing on he says um sometimes people need to be given a chance to know other people and see thoughts in a different way and start acting like real humans because we are all humans but we not acting like acting like so hope things change there for you and your family but you know the good thing is you like is that is, is that basically what he's saying is is you like where you live 
so try to learn Spanish the way you, you start to talk to people in their language. I think it's good, people everywhere. It doesn't matter what race we are. And he goes in and he says in English, um, this is, he's, he's responding to, does this translate to Spanish well? And he goes, uh, he says, the Google translation seems perfect to me. Except these words in your letter. And one of probation and one day of probation. But all the rest, translation is perfect. And I think the, uh, the probation might have been the day of accounting. I think I was talking to him about. So here he goes. Answering your questions, I've been in solitary confinement since when I was arrested. I live in a cell alone in isolation all these years. No contact, visit, all visitors are through a glass and you talk through a phone. All I can be sure that is a dog is currently living and he gets, he feeds, basically saying a dog gets better than what the prisoners do. This is the reality of where we live. I do not have any visitors except for a minister who is dedicated to visiting prisoners that no one visits. That is, he visits forgotten prisons. The minister who visits me has 81 years, and he asked me one day, Roca, do you have a family? I looked at him and said, yes, yes. And he goes, you do? You do. I do, is what he meant. He looked at me and said, seriously, Roca, do you have a family? I said, obviously, I had a family when I was free, but they have already forgotten me. So, no, I don't have a family. And to make a long story short, the people who are here visiting with me are the closest thing to family. That is life. My reality is 28 years in this place. Regarding how many appeals I have put in my name and Lexus Nexus, you will see my appeals have been exhausted. And lawyers, haha. All of this is garbage game. A state judge, a state prosecutor, state attorney, they all work for the state. Do you expect anything? Positive? Haha. Friend, I live here day by day. I'm, I'm here another day, I don't know, and my future is uncertain. I can tell you that the situation doesn't matter. I live day by day. And he's continuing on. He goes, it's interesting that people call an American a gringo. Ha ha. Obviously, the word gringo is like saying American. And if the brown black is American and doesn't speak Spanish, well, they're all gringos. Ha ha. Obviously, one who has been in the USA understands the difference that it is gringo and that he is Moreno, black. He goes on and continues on. He goes, you know, about a year ago, someone writing me told me this, told me like this. Ankle is me. Michael Roca am your nephew. So it's like, I, oh, his uncle. His uncle is Michael Roca and his nephew. Okay. And he wanted to visit him, right? So he was going to get a uncle who was going to visit him. So he's been writing him since that time. I already put him on the visitation list and he already registered with Securus. So I can call him on the phone or on my tablet. But you know what? He still not came to visit me yet. When I talk to him, he always says that he works and don't have time to come yet. So I always told him to come when he can and there's no problem. Well, he don't know much about me, so I've been patient with him. He visited with his father long time ago. He was like four years old on the time, and it is the first time I hear from him since that time. I guess he's curious about me. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. And then he goes on this, and this is where um, I'll, I'll this is this is interesting. Do you know that we have a phone on our tablets from two p.m. to eight p.m. every day? But to register, you have to be from USA. Also, you have to be on my visitation list, so you are from USA. Is your identification? Are you from USA? Is after you? <laughs> I think what he's saying is the USA after me. And um, the answer is absolutely no. No, we drove away from our own free will. Um, I can come and go as I choose. I'm a U.S. citizen as well. I have not revoked any of that. But. And then he continues on. And if you ever want to, put uh, to, to, I put you on my visitation list, just say so. It don't matter it, you can't, if you can't visit me, but you can register with Securus for the phone so we can talk sometimes. Hope you're thinking about it. I have space on the visitation list. I leave you along. Stay safe, you and your family. Roca. Now, um, I wrote back to Felix, and I first and foremost, I told him, you know what, Felix? I said, hey, you know what? My family is your family. And I said, you know what? We will absolutely adopt you if you will adopt us. And we, we are your family. And so I told him, I said, absolutely, because he speaks Spanish and so do my kids, um, that we're going to set up the prison call so that he's able to call and like have a conversation with somebody. <laughs> I mean, it's been what, how, how many, how many years, uh, 28, 27, um, and it's, it's just a, this is a long time, right? This is a long time on death row. And these guys are in solitary confinement, right? They never, ever, ever get near another people. They don't get out. And so this is 20, two and a half decades of this guy being in there. Um, and his time is very, very close to being up. And so this is why these guys are absolutely open 
to all sorts of stuff and this is very interesting because it's completely in Spanish and so um, I'm just using Google Translate to get through to this brother and I've been sending him commandments I've been talking to him about this I'm gonna try to find him a Spanish Bible that's better than the regular King King James Spanish and you know we're, we're, we're working with these brothers like this and so a lot of this people will wonder why why are you being kind why are you why are you why are you talking to us and I had another brother and uh, we'll just call him T-Rail. And T-Rail came at me, <laughs> literally came at me and said, you know, uh, th I need some truth, man. He's like, I looked up y'all scriptures in Panama and I don't see no no uh, prison ministry. Now, T-Rail was some gang leader and had like a hundred dudes after him. this like like crazy gang thing. And he's always talking about these enemies. So I, I explained to him who we were and he comes back and T-Rail um, now keeps Torah. This week, I heard from T-Rail that he is now keeping Torah, and I'm going to be doing a video on this dude uh, because I would like some some prayers for this brother as well. And so, guys, please keep Felix uh, Roca in your prayers. This brother doesn't have long when he says he's um, he's through his appeals process. The people on death row in Texas get five appeals, and when they're when they're done, at one point they just end up on a they end up with a date. And um, this is what we're dealing with with a gal named Kimberly. Um, she has been slated for uh, early 2025, and we're also dealing with another brother who wrote in. He's like, "Man, they're they're gonna kill me next year. I'm innocent. You know, they're killing an innocent man." Um, and there's some chilling stuff that I, I'd like to talk to all you guys about. This stuff that comes out of death row. You know, uh, a brother who's been in there uh, three decades it talks to me about watching all these guys being either drug out, walking with joy. Uh, screaming and fighting or just uh zombies when they walk what he calls to the van and he said in his time there he's seen 288 executions and um his time is up as well and so man this is a, a crazy world that we're in thanks to everybody who supports Josh scriptures in this ministry and is uh helps with with donations even where we've had brothers and sisters throw in donations and we have been able to wield this and get these books into these brothers and sisters in chains. And guys, we got a 100% success record getting these Bibles into prisons. And the, the grifters at the Holy Scriptures were telling everybody how hard it is to get these Bibles in. And we've had nothing but success. So, guys, uh, Yah is working in, in various dark places. Guys, keep us in your prayers, please. And we uh, much love to all you. I'm out.